There was a Samurai Jack video game? Yeah, a few. But we aren't talking about the newer one that came out a few years ago or the Game Boy Advance one. Instead, we are looking back at the home console one called Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku that came out in March of 2004. So yeah, nearly 20 years ago, we finally got to step in the role of Jack and feel as cool as he is. The show in general is an incredible experience to sit through and when it came back for a final, more adult season, that felt so unbelievable to see. I've always been a fan of the series, so I thought it would be fun to take a look back at the Samurai Jack video game to see what it was all about and how it represented the series itself. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand- Wait, 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 wait. Uh-uh. Ah. Double Fringe Miss. Aw, you only thought you were gonna get 25 videos this year? Look at you. You look silly. But I'm here to fix that because I'm going to give you not only 25 videos, but I'm giving you 50 videos. I have two channels. That's two Fringe Misses. Each day, there'll be a brand new video on both channels for 25 days. I haven't slept in months. Enjoy the content. Or don't. Samurai Jack The Shadow of Aku was published by Sega, and right off the bat, the game truly has the look of Samurai Jack with the levels in the game that you visit. But what about Jack himself? Well, it really feels that there was a great level of detail in making him feel tough and skilled when taking down enemies through its hack and slash gameplay style. At first, you have a limited arsenal of cool combinations to pull off, but throughout the game, you'll find scrolls that teach you more flashy and cool combinations of button inputs to perform really cool attacks that make you feel like the skilled swordsman he truly is. It won't just be sword-based gameplay though, as you'll be able to utilize a bow and arrow and even get some shuriken to throw. There is also zen mode that is built up through a meter for you to slow down time to perform even cooler moves in a show-offy way. So the game does its best with the controls and the gameplay here to make you feel so much cooler in the process of defeating the hordes of enemies thrown at you. As far as any story goes, it's pretty limited and not all that much there, but Gendy Tartakovsky was involved in the process to at least deliver what story was there as something that feels like it can fit perfectly into the show without doing anything too major to affect what was left of the show at the time, which would only have a small batch of episodes left to premiere in 2004 before it ended for the first time. You start off the game making a journey to a village that needs aid in reaching the king as he says that Aku has enslaved his village, and offers to help Jack find the time portal he is seeking if he were to go and rescue his people. Once you do this as well as save the village's priest, who may know about the time portal, upon asking, he declines knowing anything and points him in the direction of the Great Tree Spirit, who might be of assistance on the quest. Once reaching where the Great Tree Spirit might be, Jack comes across three followers of the Tree Spirit who had been abandoned, due to Aku burning down the forest around them, pleading for Jack to help lead them. And Jack tells them that he's just a samurai, but is still willing to help them out if they help him get to the Great Tree Spirit. Once you find and approach the Great Tree Spirit, you ask it to help you find the time portal as you offer to put a stop to the Aku drones burning down the forest around them. And it's revealed that the Great Tree Spirit is a squirrel asking for Jack to follow him, and after defeating the enemies and catching back up with the Great Tree Spirit, he's told that the time portal is located within a volcano guarded by the dead, to which Jack continues on his quest to reach the portal. This game really is just you offering your aid as a samurai, and then getting pointed in the hopeful right direction of the time portal constantly, and through the continuing of this journey, Jack needs to find a piece of treasure, and doing so rescuing an archaeologist, which he questions about the location of the time portal, who offers to help take him to it, but I don't feel you're actually going to finally get Get to it. I seek a portal that will take me back in time. Rescue my people, and we will help you find your portal. Many thanks. Once Jack reaches the time portal, it's quickly taken away by a train that leads right to Aku City. So you follow that, and upon arriving at Aku City, he's recognized by the city's locals asking if Jack could save their friends from Aku, who have been forced to play video games to the point of melting their brains. How specifically evil of him for this circumstance. When trying to put a stop to this, he comes across Exter, who explains that he was captured by Aku and forced to program these mind-twisting video games, asking for Jack's help to get rid of them, while also offering to help him find where the new location of the time portal is. He then comes across Scotsman, an old friend who doesn't seem to remember Jack at all, challenging him to a fight as Jack refuses at first, but eventually decides to fight him as Scotsman keeps throwing out insults towards him. After beating him, he ultimately decides to help Jack take down Aku, as Jack then comes across Mad Jack, saying that Aku has offered him life once more as a way to try and stop Jack in pursuit of Aku. But he's taken down and you continue onwards. Eventually, Jack finally comes face to face with Aku as he's looking for 
for the time portal, and Aku reveals that he does in fact have it with him, threatening to destroy it, but instead challenges him to a fight now since he claims to be too powerful for him to defeat. After this, and you whip in his butt, Aku begs for Jack's mercy, but then suddenly Jack is thrown off guard as the area around him begins to shake and the floor beneath him falls through, leading to Aku surviving and Jack plummeting to his doom, until the Scotsman comes in to rescue Jack from this fall, and you escape from there. And that's it. There really isn't any true resolution here, as it is in line with any episode of the show. Jack wasn't going to get the chance at going through the portal here or defeating Aku, they just wanted you to feel like you maybe, possibly had a chance to do that. So I get that it can feel like an unsatisfying gameplay experience, not truly delivering on the feeling of beating the game, but kind of losing in the end, even if you beat up Aku pretty good. It's an odd feeling for sure, but the surrounding moments with the cutscenes are where the enjoyment lies. This Double Fringe Miss is brought to you by Gamer Subs. Hey. Hey, you heard of gamer subs? Yeah. Did you know it's less than one calorie per serving? Yeah. Did you know that it's sugar free? Yeah. Did you know if you use code fringe, you get 10% off your order? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Just go to gamer subs, use code fringe, get 10% off. Sick. Are you going to go to gamer subs and use code fringe for 10% off? Yeah. You know, it helps support the channel, right? Yeah. Do you know that you're really cute? Huh? The cutscene animations can sometimes be a, a bit wonky looking, but overall, it's not bad for what you get. It's just a tad boring based on the constant chasing of the portal and everyone just getting a favor done for them and you just get told to head to the next location. The bosses you face in the game were nothing too special. Sadly, they felt more like a longer battle with any regular enemy rather than these good and epic showdowns that the show would have had when Jack goes up against a way bigger challenge. As far as what else there is to do in the game, you're able to collect these relics that you can spend on upgrading different aspects of the gameplay, like the power of your sword, the zen meter, and your overall health. But there really isn't anything too special aside from that, leaving the game a short experience like most licensed games out there. Uh, luckily, I still feel that there's a bunch of fun to be had with the gameplay itself, and if you're a fan of the show, then even more so on the enjoyment factor of everything. You won't be coming back for the platforming, that's for sure. That's its own set of problems and clunky that can make the game annoying at points, but one of the best things about the game is how much variety it has to offer. Aside from the moves that you learn to do and how to take down enemies, the levels themselves are very well designed to constantly be throwing you new curveballs, making each area distinctly different from the last in a visual and traversal sense. But with the amount of different enemies that you come across that require you to change up how you deal with them is honestly really impressive. It feels like a lot of time was spent on bringing the world of Samurai Jack to life in a 3D landscape and it helps in keeping the game feel fresh. If the platforming gameplay was refined to be tighter, and the larger boss battle moments were more epic and required more effort from you as a player, then the game would have been a special experience through and through, but it's really held up thanks to the look of everything, enemy and level variety, as well as the hack and slash gameplay. But in a lot of the things that make it feel like it represents the show well, it gets them right, so I appreciate it for that. It's a cool game to revisit or check out if you're a fan of the show, but other than that, you're not missing all that much here. I still think it's pretty good in the long run, but I'm a huge fan of the series it's attached to. So what about you? Have you ever played Samurai Jack Shadow of a Coup? If so, what are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comments. I've been Jordan Fringe. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.